Ronnie Gallo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Shore with two more cars. Exactly. Got it, sir. Anagata is known for the fresh lobster. Yeah. And the reason why you would have to book your lobster uh, early before 4.30 is because they pull them fresh. Perfect. Thank you. Between the Caribbean Sea where we're at right now and the Atlantic where you can see the breakers. Yeah. All right. Now that is the third largest coral barrier reef in the world. Is it? The wow. first one is in Australia where you can go and see the blue, uh, the Great Barrier Reef. Yes. And then the second one is in Belize where you can go to the Blue Hole. Guys will go there and do uh, spear fishing and so forth. Here in Anagato, we've got the third largest coral barrier reef. Now there are greater barrier reefs than this uh, in the Pacifics. Uh, they develop barrier reefs every year uh, when the earth rotates on its axis and the plates shift. They have sea quakes, which are volcanic eruptions below the, the ocean bed. Yes. And those create boulders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not coral. Yeah. So you wouldn't find the marine life uh, as, as attractive as you would find here in Anagato. Now, due to the fact that it's so shallow all around, the sunlight plays a great part, just like on the land with the plants. Now, we, we all know that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis and germination in plants. And it's the same thing with the marine life. Because of the depths of water, you can find more marine life, brighter sea fans, you can find uh, sea anemones, you can find more grass. So, that's what makes Anigata, uh more unique than anything else you can find. Now, this horseshoe reef right here was responsible for over 300 plus shipwrecks. Really? <laughs> yeah. That one like right Yeah. Over 300 plus shipwrecks was recorded on that reef. Now most of the boats, of course, you know, back in those times in the 1400s and so forth, were all made out of wood. Yeah. Over time, that that wood would just drift out into the Atlantic and just go, you know, go with the tide. Mm -hmm. um, there's no like real dive sites on this reef right now. Years ago, I spoke with some of the older guys, and they told me there was areas outside of. Uh, of Table Bay and so forth, they used to go and uh, you know dive down into old old boats used yeah. to be there. But up here, I only know of one. It's called the 801 that sits straight up east from here, and that's a boat that was traveling in the 1980s with fabric uh, buttons and so forth. And it just it just hit uh, up on against the reef. Some of the guys said they were coming out to dive conk and they saw uh, saw the whole thing and they rescued people. Off of it. So the only thing that sits there now is just the shaft and the prop. And Probably piece of danger. Uh, is there sport fishing out here? Yes. So there's bone fishing okay. that sits uh, off the coast of the island where you yep. can see that brown. Mm -hmm. It's called the flats. Right. And you can notice up here when the tide drops low, you can see a piece of the flats is showing. Yeah. If you stand, you can see it straight over the top of this long. Oh, yeah. Right? So guys would stand there and they would fly fish for bone fish. Okay. You know bone fish, right? Yeah. So they do the catch and release up here for bone fish. They can do African pompano and they can do tapons. Uh, the big bass, yeah, all here. So, there are bone fishing guides that can take you around. Really? If, you, if you're interested, I can point you out to a few of those guys. That's on um, next, next agenda, yeah.